In this video, I'm going to show you how you can trade different cryptocurrencies on the Slingshot app, how you can save money on trading fees, and also how you can potentially qualify for Slingshot's future airdrop, which a lot of people have speculated might be coming. For starters, before you can trade cryptocurrencies on this app, you're going to need two things. You're going to need an Ethereum wallet that's compatible with Web3 apps like Slingshot. So for example, that's gonna be your MetaMasks, your Coinbase wallets, your Rainbow wallets, and there's other options as well. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be using MetaMask, which is one of the most popular Web3 wallets. And you can see I have some ETH in this account. And before you can trade on Slingshot, you're also going to need to have some ETH in an Ethereum wallet like this. Now, once you have this set up, you're ready to go. So you're gonna to want to go to app.slingshot.finance. And this is what the home screen of the Slingshot app looks like. Now, when you're trading between different cryptocurrencies, ETH is usually going to be used as the trading pair. Although you can definitely swap between different coins on different networks, the liquidity is usually going to be best when you're swapping with something like ETH, or if not with ETH, then with a stable coin like USDC. So in order to make trades on the app, you need to connect your wallet. You can see in the top right hand corner there's a button that says connect wallet and you'll be able to connect your wallet by selecting which one you're using now once your wallet is connected you're going to see your address in the top right hand corner they haven't yet integrated ENS domains like dot ETH names and hopefully they do that soon but I still use the app because I like the user interface and also because there might be an airdrop in the future now when you've connected your wallet you can hit for example on the portfolio tab and it's going to show you what assets you have on different networks. So you can see I have a little bit of ETH on the Ethereum mainnet, also on Polygon, and also on Base. And this is useful information because, for example, if you forget which networks you've sent ETH to and started to use, this automatically reads the blockchain ledger and knows where your assets are. And so you can actually trade on all three of these different networks as well as many other ones. So let's go back to the swap page because this is where we can make trades. For starters, you need to select which network you're trading on. Now, when it comes to the Ethereum mainnet, the gas fees for transactions are higher. And Slingshot has this useful feature where they show you approximately how much it's gonna to cost to make a trade. And you can see that currently it's gonna cost almost 30 US dollars just to make a swap. But if we were to make the exact same trade on a different layer two network like Base, for example, or Arbitrum, you can see that the gas fees for that transaction would be less than a dollar. Now, if you're wondering how to get ETH from the mainnet onto the different layer twos so that you can save money when you're doing things like trading, I have another tutorial on that and I'll throw a link up here. But for the purposes of this video, let's switch to the Polygon network and make a trade here. So when you choose the network that you wanna trade on, you also have to make sure that your MetaMask account or whatever wallet you're using is also changed to that same network. So I'm gonna change my MetaMask to the Matic network. And you can see that I have 23 Matic and a little bit of wrapped ETH ready on this. And at this point, I have to decide what I'm trading from and what I'm trading to. Currently, I have some wrapped ETH, so I think I'm going to exchange some WETH, and I'm going to exchange this for some USDC, which is a stable coin and is always pegged to $1. The next step is that you have to choose how much you want to trade. So if I wanted to change all of my wrapped ETH for USDC, I could just hit the max button. On the other hand, if I only wanted to exchange, say, 10 US dollars, I could select how much USDC I want to receive, and then it will automatically tell me how much WETH I need to spend in order to get that. So let's say I want to do this trade here and exchange 0.00622 wrapped ETH for 10 USDC. The next step is to hit review swap. And this isn't confirming the transaction. First of all, when you want to exchange, you have to unlock a token for trading. That's gonna require you to sign a message in your wallet, in this case, MetaMask. And I'm going to give Slingshot access to my wrapped ETH so that I can exchange it for USDC. So now once I've given approval to the app to access my wrapped ETH, then I have to actually confirm the swap. Now you can see here that this is the rate and there's something here called max slippage. The slippage is by default set to 1%, which is supposed to protect you against MEV bots 
front running your transaction and when that happens you could get a lot less than what you're actually trying to buy. However, if you really wanted to just make the trade and you weren't worried about the slippage, you could put a custom amount here. Although I would not recommend setting the slippage rate too high because in all likelihood you'll probably lose your capital. Anyways, I'm gonna go with the default slippage of 1%. I'm gonna hit swap and I have to go to my browser wallet one more time to confirm this transaction which is gonna cost me two cents or 0.0418 Matic, which is an acceptable fee to pay in my opinion. Okay, there we go. The transaction went through and now I have 9.98 USDC in my wallet. And the fact that I have slightly less than 10 is because of that slippage. Now it's not showing up in my MetaMask account right now, but if I go down here to the token explorer for USDC, I should be able to click on this button here and add this to my MetaMask wallet so that I can see the balances in here as well. Now these assets are on the blockchain, but sometimes you actually have to manually add them in to a browser wallet like MetaMask, otherwise they won't show up there. Versus on the Slingshot app, one of the nice things about the portfolio feature is that it automatically detects what's in your wallet and it shows up right here. So that is how you make a swap on the Slingshot app. Now let's talk about this potential future airdrop. For starters, if there is an airdrop and people are speculating that there might be, they're probably going to reward two main things, which is transaction volume, i.e. the number of swaps that you make on the app, and also transaction value. So if you're trading for $10 like I just did, it's gonna be worth less in the eyes of an airdrop than if I was trading $10,000 at a time. However, one important thing to say here is that you could get penalized if you're just taking, let's say, the same $100 and swapping it back and forth between two different assets or even circling it around in a bunch of assets because that's seen as a civil attack. You're trying to game the airdrop, trying to make it look like you've had way more transactions than were actually organic and trying to make it look like your transaction value is much higher than it actually is. If you're just taking the same $100 and moving it from one thing to another, your wallet address could potentially get screened out of a future airdrop. So that's something to keep in mind and I only recommend actually making transactions if you want to buy a different token or a different cryptocurrency for a specific purpose as opposed to just spamming transactions trying to get an airdrop because that might come back to bite you in the end. There's a couple other things that you can do on the Slingshot app. For example, you can use their bridge to change from one network on the Ethereum stack to another which is a useful feature, but there's tons of other bridges out there as well. You can also look at the markets tab, which shows you uh, what is trending in terms of what are people trading. And you can also look at the NFTs tab. And Slingshot has introduced an interesting fractionalized NFT trading feature where you can own cards that represent essentially shares in an NFT. So let's say an NFT is super expensive, like a CryptoPunk. Well, instead of having to buy the CryptoPunk up front, you could buy shares of a CryptoPunk through their NFT exchange here. And so when we're talking about future airdrop potential, the more that you interact, not just on the swapping side of things, but also with the bridge and with their NFT marketplace as well, the more likely it is that you're going to qualify for said future airdrop and potentially get a larger airdrop if that ever actually happens. Anyways, hopefully you found this tutorial helpful and I'll see you in the next video.